Mansfield's colleague at Harvard, Michael Sandel, also weighs in on the human condition in the late 1990s with a piece titled The Public Philosophy of Contemporary Liberalism. Now, Sandel does something very, very interesting at the beginning of this essay. He suggests the following, that two types of freedom have defined the American liberal experience. The first type of freedom is what he calls liberal freedom, and that's of a more recent form. The liberal way of thinking about the world allows every individual to choose for himself or herself what he believes is right. So yes, yeah, certainly there are things that hold society together. You have elections, you have debates and all the rest, but at the end of the day, that liberal society that is defined in terms of its process is not one that's going to suggest a permanent commitment from all of its members. Now, liberal freedom differs from Republican freedom, the second form of freedom in this way. In the Republican definition of freedom, there's a sense of common responsibility that all citizens have. They must be aware of current events. They must be partaking in the affairs of society. It's not so much a matter of every individual unto themselves, but how every individual working with every other individual can defend society. The Republican freedom that Sandel speaks of is a Republican freedom that was known by many Americans at the end of the 18th and throughout the 19th century. It was set aside as we move towards a more liberal conception of who we are, but it's still nonetheless a very important model to look to. Why? Well, if we realize that we've moved on from Republican freedom to liberal freedom, we're going to get a sense as to what are the types of liberalism that have defined our experience and can these types of liberalism, can they hold American society together? So the first type of liberalism that he takes into account in this essay is what he calls relativistic liberalism, the idea that uh, no one can judge whether that one idea is any better than any other idea. Well, if that holds true, then that idea itself is problematic because it can't make a claim uh, to being true. The second type of liberalism that he takes up is utilitarian liberalism, this idea that the greatest good for the greatest number is the way that you can organize a liberal society. But that type of freedom, that type of liberalism does what? Uh, it looks at human beings as a means to the end of society rather than an end in themselves. So likewise, not good and not able to hold society together. The third type of liberalism that Sandel looks at that likewise suffers a challenge is what he calls Kantian liberalism. A Kantian liberalism on the one hand tries to do what? It tries to grant every human being a certain amount of dignity. But the question is, well, how much freedom and how much dignity ought every individual to have? And what happens when that individual dignity conflicts with the betterment of society or an egalitarian ethic? So here Sandel tells us that the Kantians are split between a more kind of individualistic Kantianism and one that's more communal. Fourth type of liberalism that also suffers is what he calls minimalistic liberalism, which is um, a type of liberalism that is democratic. When you go into the public square, you keep your opinions to yourself. But when you're at home in your own private uh, place, you can have these conversations. So there's a certain shutting off of public discourse about the things that we care about. Sandel says that uh, that minimalistic liberalism likewise cannot work because it really is those things that, that we really care about that we want to talk about, not simply in our homes, but also when we go in a public square or also when we're at church. So where then does Sandel end up? Well, he argues at the end of his essay, and here making the case against liberal freedom, that a procedural republic cannot contain the moral energies of a vital democratic life. What Sandel is suggesting here is that we need to find a way to discuss in, in, in serious and in intentional ways justice. Justice needs to be part of our discourse again. We can't simply uh, live unto ourselves and our own lives as we would and not want to bond with others. We have to learn how to speak with civility, how to communicate with respect to people we disagree with because you can't hide and you shouldn't hide the most important things in life. 